Today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I make uh, carburetor synchronization tools. I'm going to make both styles. I'm going to make a uh, bottle to bottle style, where at no time ever is do you have a risk of sucking fluid into your engine. And I'm also going to make the 2x4 style, which actually plank style that mounts, which is just a direct hose from one carburetor to the other. And uh, I kind of like personally this idea a little better because you can't suck anything into your engine. Um, so what I have here is a couple of water bottles. Actually, they were orange juice. Doesn't matter. Just wash them out, clean them out. And then uh, you want to pop two holes in the top of these in each one. And what's going to happen here is I have some, this is quarter inch inner diameter vinyl tubing. I got it at the hardware store for a couple of bucks. Um, we want to drill these holes that way. And I cut them on an angle so it can't pinch on the bottom because I'm going to bring it right down to the bottom. We're going to slide that right down in, stay just a touch off the bottom. Now these holes I drilled using a step bit or a unibit, that way the holes would be on an angle. It bites the, uh, the hose in better and you won't have to seal it up when you drill a hole through it. So we'll bring this down. all the way to the bottom and then we'll back it up just a little bit. So in essence what's going to happen here is we're going to have a liquid connection between those two. These will be taped together and we'll have a single hose which dead ends right below the cap going to one carburetor and a single hose dead ends here which goes to the other carburetor. Now what that's going to do is when you fire it up and you're running it uh, whichever cylinder is pulling more volume of air, it's going to suck, it's going to create a vacuum, and the fluid's going to come through this tube and fill this one if this cylinder is higher, and then we'll dial in the idle screws. We're going to go through the whole synchronization process, and by the time we're done, you're going to know how simple it is to synchronize uh, carburetors. It's going to be very, very simple to do. And it's a huge improvement over, I have a snowmobile, it's a 86 Arctic Cat 500. And I rebuilt the carburetors, I went through the whole thing and fired it up and it ran great. And then it was, uh, it was a little all over the place. And what I knew, what I figured out it was, is the carburetors were out of sync. So it's a very simple process to do and you will learn that today. Now, when you go to connect this to a carburetor, you've got, most carburetors have some type of uh, nipple for a primer system, or they have a vacuum port that's blocked off that you can attach to. Now, my particular carburetor is on the Cooney VM34 round slides, and they have the primer attachment for, uh, you know, to prime it while it's cold. So I can, I can easily connect this to those two um, to those two nipples coming off. Now those are very small, so what I'm going to do is reduce it down like this. I've got the quarter inch line that goes into the uh, synchronization tool, and then I've got a small piece of vinyl tubing that's going to slip inside that, which is seals nice and tight, and then this is the actual primer hose. I think it's 3 16 um, that fits onto the carburetor nipple itself. So what I'll do is I'll take this apart and I'll attach this to a 10-foot piece, however long. It doesn't matter how long the hose is because the vacuum is going to pull just the same. Um, and this is what you're looking for. You're looking for a vacuum port on the load side of the carburetor, which is the engine side of the carburetor. If you have a, uh, a butterfly valve that opens and closes for your throttle, then you want to find something on the engine side of that to give you accurate uh, synchronization. And with the Makuni round slides, it's a perfect situation because it already has the port. So I'm gonna go and go ahead, cut a two, two 10 footers. I'm gonna fill this with two stroke oil and we're gonna go outside and we are going to hook it to the machine and balance the carbs out. Now what I did is I mounted uh, both bottles to a board and I'll put a plank in the back of it. That way it can sit like this right next to the machine. With a couple of six foot pieces of, uh, of tubing that'll come one from here, one from here, and go to each individual carburetor. All I did is I just lined it up, drew a pencil mark around, some tie wraps on there, nice and uh, eight holes in it. Got some tie wraps, it's pretty sturdy on there, give it a good shake, it doesn't really budge. And when I bring it outside and we hook it to the snowmobile, I will just uh, throw something heavy 
right there. And we're almost good to go. Okay, so I'll try to explain this the best way I can. What you do is after you rebuild your carburetors, uh, you will take your idle screw and back it out all the way until it doesn't touch the throttle slide. You see there's a little tiny gap underneath that throttle slide. Now I set that with a very small drill bit. Um, what we do is we take the throttle slide adjustment cable and we loosen it completely. This way the throttle slide completely shuts on both carburetors. We do this at the same time. Then what we do is we take a very small drill bit, just something to get it off the bottom, maybe an eighth of an inch drill bit, and we pull the throttle so it comes up and we, we set the idle screw so that we have very, just a tiny bit of drag on the drill bit. And that's what this completely set so that the thing will slam completely shut all the way. Your throttle slide adjustment cable. Um, now what we do is we set it, we set both carburetors so that there's a one eighth of an inch drill bit that has just a little bit of drag underneath on the intake side. Okay, the engine side. You can do it the other side, but you need a bigger drill bit. I think it's easier to do it this way. So, once we use our idle screw to adjust the height of the throttle slide so that we have just a little drag on the eighth of an inch drill bit on both carburetors, now what we do is we check through squeezing the throttle cable that both slides open up, just start to move, and open up completely at the exact same time. That's where the, the synchronization of these carburetors comes in. You have to sync them before you can balance them. Um, one of the easy ways I found to sync this style of a carburetor with another one is on the very bottom of the you can, you can look at the, at the movement of it, but if you have it set with the drill bit method, you can watch them, but I think it's almost easier to set the two carburetors right next to each other, and when you pull it up and you watch the very bottom of the throttle slide, it's got just a little bit of a cutaway. A super small, it's maybe one millimeter, where it comes from this angle, and it goes 90 degrees that way, but right at the corner, there's just a little tiny cutaway where it's a different angle. It's like three angles. You've got this way, you've got 90, and right where they meet, there's like a little tiny 45 or whatever you want to call it. What I do is I look at the top of the bore right here, and I make sure that the very edge of this portion is even at the top of the bore on both of them. Now, it's not full throttle, but if you line those two up, your carburetors will move at exactly the same time and the way you would make the adjustment is you get one that's, you, you use these up top here to tighten it up or loosen it. And once you experiment, it becomes very simple to understand what you have to do. You loosen this lock nut right here. Uh, you can't see it, stupid camera. You loosen the adju adjustment locking screw, which is right here, the, the 10 millimeter bolt, I should say, or nut. And then you would spin this up or down by hand while you're watching both of them. And like I said, I like to look right up here. And when that cutaway lines up with this one, and it lines up with that one, and you can let them go, you'll hear it hit. It'll be one click, not two. You gotta have good ears to hear it. But once you get these, so they have, they're moving at the same exact time. Then you lock this bottom screw down, put it all back together, and that'll get you right in the ballpark. That'll put you right in the ballpark, ready to balance the carbs with an external tool. Now the balancing of the carbs is different from the sink. The sink, we synchronize the throttle plate or the throttle slide movement so that they're perfectly in sync. They move up and down. The balancing of the carburetor, it's got a lot to do with compression. It's got a lot to do with a few, there's a few different things in there that it has to do with. But basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adjusting the height of the throttle slide at idle so that both cylinders pull the exact same amount of vacuum through this carburetor.
That's what the balance is. And it's very, very simple to do. And I'm going to get my, man, my homemade synchronization tool. And I'm going to show that to you right now. So go ahead and start your engine up. Warm it up. Let it run for 15, 20 minutes. Get it nice and hot. And then we'll get into the adjustments. All right, we're out the sled. And uh, I had to make a modification because it's so damn cold outside uh, that the oil was too thick for the amount of vacuum that this thing was pulling. Um, you saw me move it by blowing into the tube in the basement. But... For whatever reason it didn't want to work so what I did is I dumped that out and I did use water if you do use water make sure you don't have enough in one of these containers where it can get if this all goes to there you don't want to suck it into your engine so just make sure you keep the level a little low make sure you've got your adapters and I'm going to plug in right there where you see the primer line so I'm going to go like that and this is my left cylinder one this is my right. So I'm going to press this right in. Make sure it's on there and it's got a nice tight fit. And we'll do the other side. The other side's a little bit of a pain in the ass, but it'll go. There she goes. Both sides are on. And away we go. I'm going to move one of the screws, this way you can see the level. I'm going to throw one of the carburetors out of whack on purpose. That was me increasing the idle on the right cylinder, which is connected to this tube. Now I'll turn the idle screw back out. from the levels in the bottles that a uh, very small amount of idle speed screw adjustment makes a big difference in the vacuum uh, it just takes you know a 30 second of a turn or a, not even a quarter of a turn to, to send it from one way to the other so that's it I mean once you get that to the point now the levels don't really matter it doesn't have to be even across here all we have to have is a, uh, where it's not climbing in one cylinder and not lowering in the other. Once we get it, this could be up to here, this could be down to here. As long as it's not still increasing or decreasing, obviously for visuals you want it even, but as long as one is not creeping and or lowering, once you dial that in, your carburetors are set, and that is the balancing of your, your carburetors feeding your engine. And I hope this video helps.